Welcome to episode 14 of the Railroads Online Track Building Tutorial and in today's episode we're not going to build any track. First off we'll have a look at the map and this is the map of where we've currently built so far and we've got almost the first three locations finished. There's just one small line to put in at the sawmill and we can't put that in until we have got some logs in the pond and some items at the sawmill to be able to drop on the ground to mark where to build the track at. And the first thing that I actually want to talk about after this today is water in locomotives. Now I've made this nice little explanation here and so that people understand that the water when you put it in from a tower doesn't go straight into the boiler and the numbers that you see when you hop into the driving interface are only the boiler. The water goes into the tank and you get 100 litres in there for every 5 seconds and then there's a little steam pump on top of the boiler which pumps the water into the boiler from the tank that's on the engine at 1.5 litres per second and if you say for example of the porter it only takes 40 seconds to fill the tank but then it takes a further five minutes for that for the um, water to get pumped from the tank into the boiler and we'll have a look at that on the actual locomotive and if we look here you've got two tubes as we look down the front of the locomotive. You've got this big tube on the bottom, runs all the way into the cab, and then you've got this sort of half tube that sits on top. The half tube that sits on top is the tank, and as you can see, the tank's empty. Now I've purposely emptied this locomotive so that you can see that there's no water in it. And the sight glass there on the back of the boiler has got no water in it. And when we hop into the driving interface if it lets me do it where do you look because I never actually use the driving interface somewhere here you can press F and it'll let you get in it's stuffy let's open the windows oh there we go and you can see we've got zero water. So what we'll do is, we, and you don't even have to open the cap, but we'll open it. And we'll pull the water down. And then we'll stick our head in through the tank. I know it looks like I've missed it's not running in put it up a little bit higher and now it's going in you can see the water plane rising as the water goes in and as it's going up then you'll see it drop little tiny bits that's it pumping it into the boiler now this only takes 40 seconds to fill the tank and it'll only take eight units from the water tower but because some's already pumping into the boiler it's taken 10 there we go now it should be at the fill level and that there is the overflow it's full that's it that's all it takes to fill an engine and now it's full so we'll put the water pipe up and we'll put the cap down and we'll go back here and we'll have a look and the boiler has only got just a little bit in it. We'll hop in the engine and we'll have a look and it says it's only got 112 and it's still climbing. It's pumping in at 1.5 litres every second. But that's, we, it's now ready to drive. All we need to do is fire it up. We'll fire it up now. brakes are on so it doesn't roll away on us. Now we need to collect our rail cars. 
because I've left them all over here in the bought, bought six more. We need to go get some logs on them. Now the re-rail tool is another one that people seem to have problems with. And it says that the left mouse button, but it doesn't say click or hold. And as you can see, it's put the brake at the right end for me. But if this was the wrong way around and I needed it to flip it, you've got to click and hold the left mouse button and then move down the track until it brings up the next point where it'll show. And as you can see, it's flipped it round. Now, if I want to flip it back again, you let go of the mouse button and move down the track into the next point where it'll show and it's put the brake at the other end. So we'll move it up here and right click to drop it down. Put in some links and pins. Rinse and repeat for the, oh, I'm gonna select it, there it is. rest of the rail cars and this is why I have this little section of track here so that it's easier to get the new rolling stock out of the spawn area than it is to drive in there and back up and collect them all and have to go backwards and forwards and switch three times time we get over here we should have a little bit of steam built up see on the pressure gauge the steam's just starting to rise so we'll put it in reverse turn off the brake and we don't want much and when you're flipping levers if you hold down the left shift key it'll actually give you very fine increments that you can move that oh, helps it to switch points the right direction doesn't it We'll give very fine increments of where you set your levers at. That one connected, turn the brake off. That one connected, brake off. Connected, break off and that one and the break. That one connected and the break. And the break. And we're ready to go. Go get some wood. Break on to stop us moving backwards. Switch back to forwards. Break off. And we're already up to pressure. Now if we look here, we'll see the boiler is now full in the time that it took to fill up uh, to connect all the rail cars it has filled the boil up from the tank but the tank will nearly be empty now it will only have 300 litres left in it hopefully we'll line right to go all the way through and the R and T key allows you to lean out the window Not that it really makes you go any far 
faster. That slows down. That slows down at full speed. So we're hitting on the speed cap and they're limited to about 16 miles an hour at the moment. After the coming spine update, which is pretty much a rewrite of the whole game, the speed caps will be lifted and the locomotives will go there in real life speeds. You probably notice that there's more trees because I used the rows save editing tool and did a tree replant which puts all the trees back at a set distance away from the track. So you don't have to be scared about removing too many trees when you're trying to work out where your path should go because there are ways to put them back again. So much nicer up on here now that all the trees are back again. It was looking rather barren up here at the logging camp. I will stop here. Mm, brakes, brakes, stop. Yes, Betsy does not have very good brakes. And we overshot. Brakes off. Push them back. shut it the other way. That's 
close enough. Now, if we look in here, yes, see, there's only about 250 to 300 litres left in the tank. So, at our first stop after filling up an empty locomotive that had no water in it at all, we need to put a little bit more water in it. We can see the levels rising now. All the way to the top and there's the overflow. And now we have a full boiler and a full tank. Breaks off. Let's move forward. use these decking rail pieces that we put here to line up so that we have this coupling somewhere between these two points and then it'll always load onto the right car and this is something that I wish the devs would speed up these cranes while they move at a realistic speed from a gameplay perspective they are very slow. It takes a long time to load a rail car. Or something else that they could change is you click to start loading and then click again to stop loading. So you've only got to walk to them and click on them once. That would also work quite well. expect that the developers will be working on quality of life things for at least a few more weeks. This is the update for the spines which is really it's a whole core game um, rewrite. It's going to be a few more weeks at least. So we can keep building on our current tracks and keep playing and running trains for at least a couple of weeks before we have to deal with whatever happens with the new spines, whether it's a case of you have to start your map again or there's some way to convert the existing rail over to the new spline system because it completely changes the way the rail cars and the locomotives interact with the track. It also cuts down on the number of calculations that need to be done each second for the physics engine, which removes that bottleneck we've been getting at the CPU when you get too much track and too many rail cars on your map. And with my current setup, and I haven't got a very powerful computer, it's a few years old now, it's a i7 770K and a 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 1080 overclock. So you're, it's, it's a few years old. I can get to one locomotive and about 60 rail cars and then I start to get a physics slowdown happening. But it, it doesn't matter even if you've got the, the latest and greatest gear, the physics slowdown is still happening at about the same time. Other players on the Discord that have got new, newer and faster computers than mine uh, can't get much over 100 
rail cars and then they're having problems. Oh, if that breaks on it is. Now we'll move and we'll use the third person view by pressing V to spot the last three the last two cars and about there back it off put the brakes on put the brakes on and by the brake time the brakes come we should be about lined up and that's close enough this rail car is not touching that one it'll go to the correct one so you've got a fair distance that you can get it wrong and still get it on the right rail car If you had a second play here spotting it, you'd be able to get it middle every single time. slow cranes if they sped this up by even one second on the outswing and one second on the inswing it had cut you know 30 seconds off of loading you know even a small train this size Let's go, off to the sawmill. So it breaks off, and that breaks off. Check our fire, which still should have plenty left. We might put one more log in there. switch and let it roll. physics engine that if you go over speed the rail cars will start bouncing and you'll fall off even if you're on a straight we'll probably go a little bit quicker so pull it up to 18 so we got a little bit of power pulling against the brakes Nice smooth track. Helps a great deal when you're moving right on that limit of where the maximum speed can be and you're about to fall off because it gives it less chance for it to the 
of his attention to like miss a step and then you're suddenly picking them up out of the dirt. So with my good tracks, we shouldn't need Heiss's derail counter. the switch that runs us into the I probably should double check this crossover to make sure I didn't leave a track in it and I didn't that's probably a good thing because they make the nasty derails when you forget about that bit of track and we'll just gently roll on into here unload them as they roll past. And as the weight gets less though, train will come to a stop. There we go. Move it forward to the last two. All unloaded and paid. Hey, right, and that's all for today's episode. In the next episode, now that we've got something here at the we can drop on the ground, we can put in this last little bit of rail on this side and that will be the first three industries built. Well, thanks for watching, see you in the next episode.